Hello BYW students, it's Mr. Sullivan. Today is Tuesday, February 2nd. We are wrapping up our final unit today and tomorrow. Then you'll have a quiz review and then you'll have your quiz. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning how to find solutions to polynomial equations. So a few months ago we learned how to solve linear equations. Now we're going to learn how to find the solutions to a polynomial equation. So today's learning target is I can solve a polynomial equation by using different factoring techniques. Here's our procedure. We're gonna put our equation in standard form, everything on one side, zero on the other. So the whole goal is to get your equation to be equal to zero. This is your main goal. Okay. Then you're gonna factor then you're gonna set each factor equal to zero, or t time, and then you're gonna solve each mini equation, okay? So the first type of polynomial factoring solving we're gonna be looking at is the GCF leftover, which requires us to take out our factor pair sheet from one to 100. So for our first example, we have 16p to the fourth plus four p cubed equal to zero. The first thing we do is we wanna find the prime factorization of each term. So I wanna find the prime factorization of my 16 p to the fourth, and my four p cubed. So when I break apart a 16, I can break it apart into one and 16, two and eight, or four and four. I'm gonna do two and eight. Highlight my two, because that's prime. I can break apart an eight to be two and four. Highlight my two again and then I can break a part of four to be two and two. So I can say 16p to the fourth is equal to two times two times two times two. And then I'm gonna write four p's. I'm just gonna do one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Now, you should try to break apart 4p cubed by yourself. But here's how I break apart my 4. 2 and 2. And I can't break apart those 2s anymore, so I'm going to highlight them. So I can say 4p cubed is equal to 2 times 2. And then I'll do 3p's. Now we have to ask ourselves, what is in common to both rows? Well, if you look, I have 1, 2, 2, two twos in common, and I have three p's. So I can say my GCF is two times two, and then three p's, one, two, three. So my GCF is four p cubed. Now I write it as GCF leftovers, so I would write it as four p cubed, and then my left over here is 4p, because 2 times 2 is 4, and then I have a p. And then I have nothing left over here, so I'm going to put a 1 as a placeholder. And then I set this equal to 0. So I have 4p cubed times 4p plus 1 equal to 0. So I factored. Now I set each factor equal to 0, or I t-time it. So here's what I mean by t-time. I literally draw a t separating my factors. So I have... 4p cubed equal to 0, and then I have 4p plus 1 equal to 0. So here's what we do over here. I divide by 4 on both sides. I get p cubed equal to 0. Well, anything times 0 is 0. I mean, 0 to any power is 0, so I just get p equal to 0. Here, this becomes a two-step equation. How do I get rid of my plus one? I subtract one. I get 4p equals negative one, divide by four, divide by four, and I get p equals negative one-fourth. So this has two solutions, p equals zero, and p equals negative one-fourth. Now let's go on to our next example. 63 plus 45b equals zero. If you look at this, there are no exponents, so, I can actually just set this equal to zero and solve. So if I wanted to, 
I can just solve it like a regular equation or I can do my GCF leftover. Let's try to do GCF leftover. So if I break apart my 63, I can do three and 21 or seven and nine. I'm gonna do seven and nine. Can't break apart a seven, but I can break apart a nine to three and three. So I can say 63 equals seven times three times three. Now I have to break apart my 45. 45, I can do three and 15 or five and nine. I'm gonna do uh, five and nine. Highlight my five, break apart the nine to be three and three. So I can say 45B is equal to five times three times three times B. Now I highlight what's in common. I have a three and a three. So my GCF is nine. So I have nine parentheses. My leftover is a seven. I have a positive five B. And this is equal to zero. Now I do my t time, and I set both factors equal to zero. I set nine equal to zero, and I set seven plus five b equal to zero. Here's the issue, can nine ever be equal to zero? No, solution. It can't happen, nine is never equal to zero. Here, I need to ask myself, how do I get rid of my seven? Well, I subtract seven from both sides, and I get 5b equals negative 7. And then I just divide by 5. So I get b equals negative 7 over 5. And that's your final answer. Now let's go on to trinomial factoring where a equals 1. So this is actually a relatively quick procedure. It again relies on our factor pairs from 1 to 100. And what I recommend is you always put an a over what you want to add to and an m over what you want to multiply to. So in this case, I want to multiply to a 7 and add up to an 8. So I draw my diamond, put my 7 up top, my 8 downstairs, and what I want to do is I want to multiply to a 7. Well, the only numbers that multiply to 7 are 1 and 7, so that's all that can really go in my diamond. I check 1 times 7 is 7, 1 plus 7 is 8. So I can break this apart to be b plus 1 and b plus 7. And that's equal to 0. Here's where we do t time. We put a t in between our factors. And now we have b plus 1 equal to 0 and b plus 7 equal to 0. We have two one-step equations. I get rid of my plus one by subtracting one. So I get b equals negative one. I get rid of my plus seven by subtracting seven. So I get b equals negative seven. And that's your final answer. Let's go on to our next example. If you look, this one's a little different because I have a 24 on the right-hand side. But here, we want it to be equal to zero. So what we have to do is we have to get this 24 to the left-hand side of our equation. So to do that, I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides of my equation. My 24 is cancel, and this 24 doesn't have a like term with anything, so I can actually just do m squared plus 2m minus 24 equal to 0. I want to add up to 2 and multiply to a negative 24. So I'm going to draw my diamond put my negative 24 upstairs, because that's what I want to multiply to, and my positive two downstairs, because that's what I want to add to. I go to my factor pair sheet, and I rewrite all these combinations. I have one and 24, two and 12, three and eight, and four and six. 
Well, I think that my four and my six will work. So I'm gonna try four and six. Here's the thing, four times six is 24, not a negative 24, so I want a negative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one of these a negative. So I'm gonna make my four negative. Negative four times six is negative 24, that works. And negative four plus six is two, so this works. So I can factor m squared plus two m minus 24 to be m minus four, m plus six. And this is equal to zero. Now I do my t time. And I have m minus four equal to zero, m plus six equal to zero. I now solve both of these one step equations. Add four, add four, I get m equals four, subtract six, subtract six, I get m equals negative six. And that's your final answer. m equals four, m equals negative six, that's it for today. If you have any questions, email myself, Ms. Townsend, or Ms. Jimenez. Have a great day, ladies.